This episode of the anime begins with intensity as the main character searches for the last leader amidst a field of corpses. He wonders if this is one of those events centered around large-scale battles, but there is no real leader in sight. He decides to go check the underground level, and if he finds nothing there, he'll take the remaining gold coins and return home. The scene then shifts to Mary and Claire, who are searching for their leader but can't find him. This implies that their leader might have been a sacrifice. Additionally, the coffin has disappeared. Suddenly, Elizabeth Sama appears and kills Claire, leaving Mary devastated for not being able to save her. It Elizabeth Sama takes Claire with her and devours her, causing Mary to collapse on the ground. Then, the scene transitions to the Shadow Garden, a group of shadow girls. One of them decapitates Elizabeth Sama, freeing Claire. Another girl saves her and the girls try to provide first aid, but they realize that Claire might not survive with just basic medical care. One of the girls explains that if their leader hasn't shown up, it means they have more important priorities and bigger goals to achieve first. They cannot let Claire die as she is their older sister. We see Elizabeth Sama miraculously resurrected, and three of the shadow girls attack her again. Elizabeth Sama displays incredible strength, using her flesh to immobilize them. When one of the girls strikes her with a powerful blow, Elizabeth Sama remains unfazed. Mary informs them that the girls of the Shadow Garden are incredibly strong, but Elizabeth Sama is slow to react due to low blood pressure, making her the strongest of them all. Surprisingly, Elizabeth Sama unleashes a magical strike stronger than Eva Sama. Then, the Black Tower's juggernaut appears and delivers a powerful blow to Elizabeth Sama's face. She retaliates, knocking him to the ground. She directs her magic towards the girls of the Shadow Garden, leaving Juggernaut injured with a broken leg. Then, we see all the girls in a miserable state. One of the girls informs Mary that Elizabeth has depleted all that magical energy, and there are no signs of fatigue in her, she's been siphoning their blood to heal herself, making her stronger. The girl then asks number 666 to take Claire and leave, so both of them can survive. Suddenly, something strange happens to all the girls as a red light appears on their bodies. One of the girls realizes that Elizabeth is manipulating the demon's blood, questioning how Elizabeth dared to defile Shadow Sama's blessing. The scene shifts to Claire waking up in an unfamiliar place on a bed next to a girl she doesn't know. The girl tells Claire that the symptoms she was experiencing were due to possession, but she's now healed because he knows everything. Claire asks the girl who she means by he, and the girl explains that it's someone she knows through direct experience. The girl warns Claire that her body will soon be reduced to pieces, which alarms Claire. The girl assures Claire that she will provide some help, but Claire becomes angry and tells her to be quiet, as she has no idea what's happening, who the girl is, and who this he is exactly. The girl then places one leg over the other and asks Claire if she's heard about evolution. She explains it as a theory proposed by a scientist that suggests that people were once apes and, over time, they adapted to their environment and became human. Another scientist later claimed that living beings do not adapt to their environment, only the smartest apes survived in their harsh natural habitat and eventually evolved into humans. In other words, the division of blood into different types is another result of adaptation. This is what happened to Claire. She possesses the correct physical structure but doesn't know how to control it, causing her blood to rage and her body to react. The girl doesn't get to finish her sentence as an alarm sounds, and she is forced to shut off the laptop. Claire agrees to wait when Aurora asks her to, as Aurora was about to impart an important piece of information. Suddenly, strange markings appear on Claire's hand. Aurora tells Claire that this will teach her how to control her power. Claire questions Aurora about her name and why she is helping her. Aurora reveals her name and explains that she's helping Claire because she's an important figure to Shadow Sama. Claire is surprised by this revelation. The scene shifts back to the battlefield, where a girl with Claire's appearance appears, leaving Mary puzzled. One of the girls addresses her as the disaster witch and asks her what happened to Claire. The girl explains that she used Claire's appearance to move easily, and the color change is not magic but a reflection of light. She begins attacking Elizabeth, claiming that she is the original, and that taking control of the blood she left behind isn't difficult. She uses her magic to cut Elizabeth into pieces, asserting that she is the most potent and significant power in the world. However, a sudden break occurs in the disaster witch's arm. Oh. 
and she realizes that her body cannot withstand it. Elizabeth's neck begins to heal, and she resurrects once again. She tells the girls that her time has come, and she was just buying time until Shadow arrives. Shadow suddenly appears and declares that it's time to wake up. He attacks Elizabeth, and one of the Shadow Garden girls informs them that Shadow is more potent than the Disaster Witch, with power equal to Elizabeth. The girl asks why Shadow is wasting time engaging in combat, suggesting he could defeat Elizabeth with one blow. Shadow explains that, no matter how heavy the burden, he doesn't prepare for a single loss. This lifts the girl's spirits, and they request him to do his utmost to defeat Elizabeth. As they battle in the sky, Shadow tells Elizabeth his name is Atomic Recovery. Suddenly, something strange happens throughout the entire city, and all the people return to their normal state. The girls leave the scene, and we see Juggernaut, who talks about the Shadow Garden girls, explaining that the terminology used to name ghouls, vampires, and possessors differs. The scene shifts once more to a group of boys who realize they are fortunate to be alive but have lost everything, including their swords and armor. Shadow, standing alongside Mary and Claire, tells them that ghouls, vampires, and possessors have different names but they're all on the same side. At the end, they only suffer from magic overuse, which is easy to treat. However, there are some diseases that cannot be cured. Claire remembers a strange occurrence in her left hand when she was in her room, wondering if her blood is trying to lead her somewhere. Returning to the present, Shadow tells them that sigils, magical circles, and special powers were beyond his older sister's grasp. However, he can't ignore Maha because, in the past, all the children followed this path to overcome their childhood fears and challenges. Claire tells her brother, Sid, about the unique power in her left hand, and he assures her that she'll be fine, regardless of the path she chooses. He'll always support her. Claire is delighted and holds her brother's hand, thanking him. The train continues, and Claire asks Sid if he knows someone named Shadow. Sid asks her what she wants from him and if he's the one who burned down their school. Claire says she doesn't want anything from him. Sid then speaks to himself, expressing his confidence that his sister will face different types of trials and experiences, and she will have to confront her anxieties, Maha, and her reality. Her left hand begins to tingle, and there's nothing he can do about it because people become adults like that. However, as long as the ending is good, everything is fine. Sid admits that he never managed to recover all the gold coins he was supposed to collect. There were 3,000, but now there are only 500. Considering the current exchange rate, it amounts to just 50 million zenies. It might not be enough to support him for the rest of his life. However, he thinks carefully about it and realizes that it might be sufficient because the lawless city will always be there, and there are still two standing towers. If he faces financial hardship, he can always return. The lawless city is a cash cow. In the night, we see Shadow on the train with the white-haired girl, and he tells her it's time to hear what she has to say. And that's how this episode concludes. To continue watching the new episodes, please subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell.